every couple years I like to do a compression check on all my engines just to see how they're faring. So right now I'm doing the spark plugs. It's the perfect time to see what the compression is on, on all the cylinders to see how the old girl's getting along. So this is a fairly easy process. The first thing we want to do is make sure it's not going to start up. This is a V8, so even when one spark plug and lead is removed, it could still fire and start and run. So we remove the main lead or the power, actually just this power supply from the spark. If this is a more modern car with fuel injection and individual coil packs, you can just, you got to remove the spark plugs anyway, just remove the little plugs from each coil pack. And so I got my compression gauge here. This is the type you want. You want one that connects on like this. There's other ones with little rubber tips and they're impossible to hold in there and do it and get a good reading. So I like this style. They usually come with a couple little adapters. First thing first is just remove spark plugs. Pull out a spark plug and you save them so you can read them. This one I got a little corrosion on one side where oil build up. So I know that this is burning a little bit of oil, but no big deal. The idea is now you just screw in the gauge once you got the right adapter on there and the kind that disconnect are much easier because it just allows you to wiggle everything in easier. Put it all together. I like to put it somewhere where I can see it while I'm in the cab. I like to start it from the cab because you need to crank the engine with the carburetor, the throttle pushed wide open. So we'll just set that right there and we'll give it a crank. So we ended up with about 130 and I like writing it down and I save these little pieces of paper usually in the glove box of the vehicle or, or whatnot and it's just kind of good to know. And the idea is we want to make sure they're all about this now, all about 130 and one isn't, you know, 10 to 15 PSI lower than any other one or two together aren't. This just gives us a general idea of how all the cylinders are faring. And this is 130 PSI and I'm at 4,500 feet. So if this was actually, you actually lose about 3% of um, the pressure for every thousand feet. So I'm at 4,500, 5,000 feet. So roughly I'm using losing about 15%. So I'm losing, this would be about 145-ish if I was at sea level instead of the mountain. So let's do the rest. So I did all eight and I ended up with my highest about 132, 124, 132, 132, 131 along that side, 130, 115, 122, and 128 along this side. This one, cylinder number six being my lowest. So now we wanna see why it's lower than the rest. It's not scary lower than anything else or um, gonna cause any issues, but we wanna determine why. Say this was only 100 PSI, why it is. First I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retest it. So I'm gonna re-screw in my, my gauge, my tester, and I'm gonna test it again, make sure in, to, just to make sure I didn't not have it seated all the way or something else crank it for the exact same amount of time the other ones, which I've been doing about nine to 10 seconds. So let's recrank it and see what we end up with. So we ended up with 115 again. So now there's a quick and easy way to determine whether it's your piston rings or your valves. And that is by pouring about a spoonful of oil down into the spark plug, into the piston. And some will leak out probably onto the exhaust manifold and get everywhere. Now I'm going to catch some of it. I don't want to screw this on yet because I want it to actually lubricate the system. So I'm just going to put a towel in this general area just to catch some oil. I'm going to crank it over. I'm going to spit that towel right out because I don't. You don't want to put enough oil in there to hydrolock your engine. Now, let's screw our gauge back in and see what our reading is. So my number six cylinder right here jumped from 115 to about 131, about 16 PSI of pressure with the oil added. So I'm losing about 16 PSI's through my piston rings and any other losses are gonna be through my valves, my valve seats um, in that area. So. To show you this one, which was the lowest, and this one, which was one of the highest at 130, I'm gonna put, I put oil in this one as well. And so now we're gonna crank this one with oil. So this was 130 before. So now a good one, one of the better ones, we should jump 
uh, a little bit just by putting oil in a good one as well. So this good one that was 130 before jumped to about 135, 136 maybe PSIs. So that's any cylinder, even if it's good, will jump a little bit when you put oil in it. But that's about normal, five, six PSI. That means that those piston rings in this first one are sealing really, really good, about as good as they can. Where the second cylinder, where it jumped 15, 16 PSI, my piston rings are definitely worn more in that cylinder than, than any other cylinder. Still, it's pretty close to the other, other ones. It's nothing I'd be concerned about unless I was, you know, unless I was closer to 100 PSI or something else like that. If I was way lower. Generally, the rule of thumb is, is about 10%, more 10 PSI, 10%. So uh, I'm a little bit out of the range, but I'm still not scary. I'd be really scared if it was 20% or something, then you'd be wanting to do something. But this is an old girl. She runs good. Just... Just keeping up on it and just knowing where she sits. We got one from, this one's 2010, this one's 2005. So 12 years ago, you can see the um, that same one was low and I actually did it with oil as well. So that one was 122 where now it's 115. So it's dropped a little bit. And so that's good to know. And this one's actually from 2010, seven years ago. And that same piston, it was 119, now it's down to 115. Um, but everything else looks about the same. So it's wearing evenly. Everything's just chugging along as is. No worries. Just nice info to have and keep with the vehicle. Now, then you can take all your spark plugs out and actually look at them. And then there's a lot of good online charts that you can diagnose what your engine's doing, which each cylinder. So I, I like to keep them lined up and, and then go and see which ones are burning some oil and which ones aren't, you know, just some fun info. More fun than anything else, but it lets you diagnose problems before they get major problems. If you need one of these gauges, I'll put a link down um, where you can get one of these down in the video description. Or if you have one, just go use it. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to thumbs up. See you guys soon. Bye.